All right, it is finally here. Dino 1.0 is out. And what I want to do in this video is just kind of go over some common questions and comments I'm seeing about it. And what I want to start off with is whether you should learn Node.js or Dino first. And the answer is either. It actually doesn't really matter what you start with. And that's because Node and Dino are not really that different. Like people are thinking we're comparing apples to oranges here. Uh, but we're really not. We're really comparing apples to apples. And I don't blame anyone here. Like when I first saw Dino, I thought it was a tangerine, but it turns out that Node.js is really a Granny Smith apple and Dino is just a Fuji apple. Yeah, they're gonna taste different. Like Node.js is a little bit more sour, but at the end of the day, both Dino and Node.js will make just a fine apple pie. So what I'm trying to say is if you learn Node.js, you also will be learning Dino at the same time and vice versa. Yes, there's going to be some little differences between them, but 95% of the knowledge is going to transfer between them. Now with that said, if a noob came up to me and was like, hey Ben, should I learn Node first or should I learn Dino first? I'm going to tell them to learn Node first. And the reason for that is quite simple. It's because Node is more popular and there's way more learning resources for it. But if you want to start with Dino, honestly, it's not a big deal. You're not going to be wasting your time like learning something like Angular. Next, I just want to say I'm getting sick and tired of seeing the joke about how we're going to see job listings that require 10 years of Dino experience. Like, I don't know what happened this time around, but everyone is just going hard on this joke and spamming it everywhere. Like, it was mildly amusing the first time, but now I'm just like drowning in this joke and I'm seeing it everywhere and everywhere I turn, it just like haunts me. Now I realized because I just said that, that there is a 100% chance that somebody's going to make this joke in the comments. So what I want you to do is pause this video right now and go downvote those scrubs that think they're so clever. I'm not kidding. I actually want them downvoted to oblivion and they should just be at the very bottom of the comment section. They should be just straight buried. Okay, so on a more serious note, in my last video about Dino, I talked about how I thought it would be a good idea for them to be compatible with NPM and make it very easy for developers to work with NPM packages. And some people felt like I was missing the point of Dino and that Dino's spirit is to kind of get rid of that cruft that NPM and Node has right now and move past it. And my response is, okay, sure. I'd be fine just throwing away all this NPM code if Dino was radically different. But because it's not, it just seems like a straight mistake to be throwing away a ton of great NPM code just because it imports stuff differently. Like Dino still uses JavaScript and TypeScript. 95% of the code is exactly the same. Now I did just see Pika CDN launch, which lets you load in NPM packages and use them in Dino, which I think is absolutely great. That's definitely gonna fill a gap of not being able to use some NPM packages. So I'm happy that exists, but I think it is not the ideal solution. And the reason I say that is because Dino is all about not having a central location where everyone is downloading packages. Instead, you can just point it at the URL where you wanna get your code from, and then you can decentralize it a little bit. And if we all just kind of start using Pika to load NPM packages in Dino, we've kind of just recreated that central theme. Personally, I could kind of care less about this, but technically, if you wanna be more in the spirit of Dino, I think the way forward would instead Dino handles the conversions. And what that means is that I can grab an NPM package from wherever. So if my NPM package happens to be, you know, the code is located on GitHub or GitLab, I can point Dino at that URL and it handles the NPM package for you. And that way you can kind of decentralize these NPM packages. Even though the code is different, Dino is handling it locally and there's not that central repository. But either way, it looks like the Dino team agrees that compatibility is important. And they said, over time, we expect Dino to be able to run more and more node programs out of the box, which is very good news. Next, everyone seems to be getting their panties in a wad when it comes to the importing of URLs in Dino. They are kind of just like losing their mind. They're like, well, what happens if the place goes down that we load from? Or what happens if there's security problems because the content switches out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't blame these people too much because if you're only familiar with the Node.js ecosystem, this can look pretty alien, but it's actually not a new concept at all. The Go programming language has been handling dependencies like this for a while. And so there's a lot of standards that they use and that are built around this. So let's talk about a few of these scenarios. What happens when say your URL that you're trying to fetch from that server is down? Well, first off, I just want to mention that this is not a unique problem to Dino. NPM could run into the exact same scenario. And in fact, I've run into the exact scenario. So when I'm deploying, sometimes a package will fail to install. 
either npm just has like a hole in their system or maybe they have a little bit of an outage all i'm saying is npm is not immune to these problems either and Dino's approach to this problem is just to avoid it altogether. So number one, Dino is going to cache all the code that you are loading from remote URLs. Number two, it is a recommended practice to take those cache dependencies and check them into the version control system you're using. That way, when you deploy, all of your dependencies are right there. There's no need to fetch them. Either way, if you ignore those things, I still think in the Dino world, there's still gonna be NPM-like entities that are either registries or CDNs where you can reliably install files from. But Ben, isn't this a security risk? Just loading content or code from a URL? What happens if say like the website owner just like gives us malicious code or something? Well, again, this is not a problem that is unique to Dino. NPM, we trust them right now to give us the package that we expect, but we also still have some checks in place. For example, yarn locks and package.json locks. And Dino has the same thing. It has a Dino lock, so that'll make sure the integrity of the code does not change on us. One thing I will mention though, is yes, we can version URLs, and we just do that by sticking the version in the URL. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. But what happens if we wanna take some of these URLs and downgrade their version or upgrade their version and we just don't know what that version is like for example is it version 2.0 2.6 2.65 i don't want to have to manually look up the available versions for each package i need to upgrade there needs to be like an equivalent of npm update and i'm not sure that exists quite yet but i do think we're going to get some package managers that are like dino specific that handle some of these problems all right so there's one thing i'm kind of confused about right now I'm seeing a good amount of people get hyped about top level await in Dino. And the thing is, unless I'm missing something, Node has had top level await through TypeScript and through Babel for a while now. So maybe there's a difference, but I think what people really should be getting hyped about is they don't need to touch Babel anymore to say configure top level await. But Node has top level await too with those things, so it's not really a big deal. Next, I wanna highlight an important note from the blog post that announced the release of Dino 1.0. It mentions that the TypeScript compiler has become a bottleneck just because of how slow it is. And so from Dino's point of view, they see the only way forward is to port it to Rust to get some performance gains. Personally, I actually never thought of TypeScript being slow until I saw a tweet a long time ago by Gary. And he was talking about the startup penalty of TypeScript and how much it adds compared to other languages. And he also talks about other languages that are compiled and how their compilers are just way faster. And this was something that just never crossed my mind. When I thought about it, I was like, yeah, you know what? In the compiler world, one second is actually kind of a ton of time. And as a TypeScript developer, I would love to see the TypeScript compiler be converted over to Rust and just be uber fast. Now, someone asked Daniel, who's the program manager for TypeScript, if they had any plans or the TypeScript team had any plans to convert it over to Rust. And this does not seem like the case. I am a little disappointed by this, but I also get where they're coming from. I can see the massive time commitment it would take to port this over to be not worth the speed gains that they actually get. But I will say speed improvements for compilers like this makes a big difference. And I know this because I was using TS Node for a while, which got really slow as my code base started to grow. It was taking at least five to six seconds every time I would save the file to just reboot and load it again, which doesn't sound like a ton of time, but when you just keep making changes and you have to wait that long every single time, it really adds up fast. So I have a pro tip for you guys that are using TS Node right now and are suffering from slowness because I actually switched away from that and I've been getting much better performance using the TypeScript compiler on watch mode and then using Node Daemon to just restart Node whenever it recompiles. This is actually a ton faster because the TypeScript compiler on watch mode will actually remember build info between runs. So what happens is every time you make a change, it's not recompiling the entire project. So yeah, I highly recommend that if you're using TypeScript in Node right now, don't use TS Node, it's slow as balls. You're gonna thank me later for this, you're welcome. Lastly, let's talk about Node and Dino. Yes, I'm aware that Dino is an anagram for Node, and yes, I'm aware that Ryan Dahl pronounces it Dino. But you might be unaware of the lovely new artwork that has emerged showing that it is not Dino the sock puppet, it is Dino the dinosaur. 
And if that's not enough for you, I want you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what kind of developer do you want to be? Do you want to be a Dino developer? No, I didn't think so. You want to be a Dino developer.